Hi, this is Manos Burlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 27.3 for the manual of percutaneous coronary intervention. This video discusses how to approach balloon entrapment and fracture. Balloon entrapment and fracture is one of the three major types of coronary complications, the other two being acute vessel closure and perforation. And actually, balloon entrapment can often lead to acute vessel closure and severe ischemia. What causes balloon entrapment and fracture? For balloon entrapment, a frequent cause is balloon rupture that then modifies the balloon and may get it entrapped, especially in heavily calcific coronary vessels. Another reason is failure to deflate. And a third one is interaction with a previously placed stent. When it comes to fracture of the balloon shaft, the most common cause is kinking of the balloon shaft during attempts to insert the balloon in the coronary vessel. These are some of the causes of the failure to deflate for a balloon. One of them is that the treated lesion is very tight and essentially strangulates the balloon, not allowing the contrast to come back for the, from the more distal portion of the balloon. Another cause is premature withdrawal of the balloon into the guide catheter that can effectively strangulate the proximal portion of the balloon and prevent deflation of the more distal portion of the balloon. And finally, another potential cause is if there is damage or kinking of the balloon shaft with damage of the hypotube that allows the saline and contrast mixture to come back from the balloon all the way to the end of later. And this is how a fractured balloon or stent balloon shaft looks like. Usually kinking is the cause for this fracture to happen. How can we prevent balloon entrapment and fracture? By a good preparation of the lesion, for example, if it's a very calcified and eccentric lesion, sometimes uh, atherectomy might help uh, prepare the vessel and minimize the risk of balloon entrapment. And in terms of balloon rupture, avoiding very high pressure balloon inflations can reduce the risk of the balloon rupturing and potentially getting entrapped in the vessel. When it comes to balloon shaft fracture, the key concept is to not insert a balloon. If the balloon becomes kinked, it is best to remove it, discard it, and use a new balloon. But if uh, unfortunately a complication happens, what to do about it? And we'll discuss separately about what to do if there is failure of the balloon to deflate, if there is balloon entrapment, and if there is fracture of the balloon shaft. And standing, starting from the failure for the balloon to deflate, there are different things that can be done. For example, try a different endoflator, Try an endoflator that has only saline without any contrast, which is less viscous and potentially easier to be withdrawn. Sometimes if it's a small balloon, it can be potentially withdrawn without full deflation, but of course that's not an option if the balloon is big. And then another option might be to inflate the balloon until it ruptures. However, this is infrequently done, especially with larger balloons, because that can lead to vessel dissection or perforation. Another way to do this is to puncture it with another guide wire. And here's an example of this. This was a balloon that became entrapped into the proximal LAD. It could not be deflated. So what the operators did is um, they tried an endoflator that was filled with normal saline, but unfortunately that was not sufficient to allow removal of the balloon and deflation. The balloon remained inflated. And then what they were able to do is, because it was in the proximal portion of the coronary that did not have significant tortuosity, they used this as anchor and deep-seated the guide catheter. And then they took uh, the back end of uh, a initially a 0.014 inch wire that did not puncture the balloon. But then they took the back end of a 0.018 SP5 wire that actually was directed to the balloon and after a couple passes, that actually led to balloon deflation and then the balloon could be withdrawn back into the guide catheter with successful retrieval. So once again, 
being able to puncture the balloon might help it with deflation. In this particular case, this was done delivering the wire through the guide cutter that was pulled all the way towards the failure to deflate balloon. However, sometimes what may need to be done is to use a separate system, for example, a second guide catheter with either a guide extension or with an over-the-wire balloon to bring uh, uh, the back end of a wire very close to the failing to deflate balloon without injuring the proximal portion of the coronary artery. Moving on to balloon entrapment. One of the causes is failure to deflate, which we just discussed. But if the balloon uh, becomes entrapped into the lesion, there are several simple things that can be done. First of all, one can try general rotation and back and forth movement. Sometimes this might help uh, release the balloon from the surrounding plaque and the vessel. Another one is uh, to advance another balloon inside the guide catheter, inflate it, essentially trapping the shaft of the balloon, and then pulling everything back. That extra balloon, what it does is provides extra retention power to the balloon to minimize the risk of having a fracture of the balloon shaft. Another thing that can be done is actually to either deep seat the guide or advance a guide catheter extension as close as possible to the balloon and then pull again, which um, will illustrate the case, or another option is to use a snare. This was a case in which um, uh, there was a lesion in the middle AD, there was um, a significant waste of the balloon and then the balloon ruptured and could not be removed. So what the operators did, they advanced the guide extension all the way to the entrapped balloon and then they were able to remove it and successfully treat the lesion. So again, deep engagement either with the guide extension or with the guide itself can help. Now what to do if the shaft fractures? And the key factor that determines the treatment is whether the fragment of the balloon is partially inside the guide or not. If it is not, then one can use snares or try different wires. But if there is enough uh, length of the fractured balloon shaft inside the guide catheter, the easiest and fastest way to retrieve it is by advancing another balloon alongside the fragment of the balloon and then inflate the balloon to trap essentially the balloon fragment inside the guide and then pull everything back. And this is an example of this. This was a patient that uh, underwent a PCI of uh, a right coronary and LED lesion. There was unfortunately fracture of the balloon shaft with part of the balloon remaining into the coronary vessel. So what the operators did is that they knew that they had enough segment of the balloon inside the guide catheter. So they took another balloon, they took it to the tip of the guide catheter, but remaining inside the guide catheter, they inflated the balloon and then pulled everything back and everything came back. As you can see here, this is how it came out of the body. This is the entrapped balloon. And this is the second balloon that was used and inflated inside the guide catheter, effectively trapping the fractured balloon fragment and enabling retrieval of this equipment. This is another case that uh, is uh, separately loaded actually as part of the PCI manual cases. This was a case of angiosculpt balloon fracture. The patient had uh, a distal right coronary artery lesion that was heavily calcified. It was very challenging to expand this lesion despite several high pressure balloon inflations together with a body wire. And then the decision was made to use an angiosculpt balloon, but delivery was challenging. So the distal anchoring technique was used, inflating a balloon distally and trying to deliver the angiosculpt um, over the second guide wire. But unfortunately, during those attempts, the shaft of the angiosculpt balloon fractured. So what we have here now is um, the angiosculpt balloon distal segment being in the proximal right coronary artery. This was the anchoring balloon. So what we did in this case, and this is what came out. This is the proximal end of the angiosculpt balloon. But we did know that we had some segment of the balloon in the guide catheter. We actually did intravascular ultrasound to confirm that. And this is how it looks like. 
This is the NGO scout balloon fracture in the proximal portion of the right coronary artery. And then here we're in the guide, and we can see that actually the NGO scout balloon is coming back all the way into the guide catheter. So we knew we had something to catch. And then what we did is uh, we advanced uh, another balloon that was a trapper balloon in the proximal, um, in the distal portion of the guide catheter, fully inside the guide catheter that was inflated and then we withdrew the entire system and we saw that this um, entrapped NGO scalp nicely came back together with all the guide wires here it is now into the sheath we do have the guide catheter this is the entrapped NGO scalp this is the so-called trapping balloon and this is what came out so actually it was a fairly lengthy segment of the NGO scalp balloon and the lesson here is, if there is any kink, the reason for this fracture likely was that a kink occurred in the angioscult balloon before insertion that then led to rupture. So the lesson is, if there is a kink in the shaft of a balloon, it should be discarded and not actually inserted into the body. And then eventually we did some more balloon inflations and uh, stopped this particular case. Moving on to another option, which is snaring. And that's especially useful if the fragment is not inside the guide catheter. This was a case in which a balloon fractured in the right coronary artery. A micro snare elite was advanced in the distal portion of the guide and essentially snared the fragment of the balloon shaft that was then subsequently removed with a subsequent nice final result. Now, if what is fractured is actually a very small segment of the balloon, as happened in this case, here we have uh, about 10-15 millimeters of balloon segment that was fractured and retained into the vessel, one can do intravascular imaging. And if that fragment is not protruding into the aorta or other critical coronary location, one way to approach it is actually to leave it in place in situ and cover it with a stent, which is what happened in this particular patient. So to summarize, balloon entrapment and fracture is a potential complication whenever a balloon is being used. To prevent it, probably the key factor for preventing entrapment and uh, balloon shaft fracture is to not use balloons that uh, have a kinked shaft, but instead, instead uh, discard them and get a new piece of equipment. If the balloon fails to deflate, sometimes it can be punctured with another guide wire to allow deflation. If the balloon is entrapped, the key mechanism for retrieval is to advance a guide extension or potentially deep seat the guide and pull back or use a snare. And if the balloon shaft fractures, the easiest way to retrieve it, if the balloon shaft is protruding back into the guide catheter, is to use another balloon to trap this uh, fragment and then retrieve everything as uh, a set. And sometimes a snare can be used. Thank you very much.